Yay, it's working. Instagram live from sunny New York, if you can see. And that doesn't work. I guess it's sunny everywhere right now in the world. I mean, if it's not, it will be tomorrow. That is not philosophy, it's weather facts. So today we're gonna talk about, hi Katerina, we're gonna talk about um, what to look out for when you are house hunting. So I'm being told that it's super rainy in Oaxaca. Okay, well pr probably tomorrow you'll have some sun, let me know Katerina. So um, we currently have two movements in New York, the one that already started during the pandemic, which is people moving out of New York because they want larger spaces, they want to be closer to nature, they don't need to commute to work anymore. So people looking for houses outside of New York. And then we have a second movement that started a couple months ago, which is people coming back to New York, which is what I thought would happen with all the people saying, New York is dead, New York will never be the same. New York is New York. What did you think was gonna happen? It's better than ever. So today, as I said, we're gonna talk about house hunting. So I always thought there should be some kind of period when you uh, are looking for a house or an apartment where you can try the space out, like live in it for a month or two to see what really happens in that space. Think about it, when you hire someone or you are being employed somewhere or you're dating someone, there's a trial period. But with houses and apartments, you have to be all in before you even, even spend one day in the house. At best, you get probably a couple of hours in the house going back and forth visiting it. House hunting is as emotional as it is logical, so let's try to combine both in this explanation. How do we get closer to knowing if the space you're visiting is for you or not? For me, the ideal home, of course, would be something that I would build from scratch or that I would completely renovate because when I go on to tour houses, I see what I would do differently in each space and it's a lot usually. Uh, when I'm house hunting, I'm trying to stay objective because the decor and furniture that are already in the space, either because it's from the previous owner or because it's being staged, takes all my attention and usually that attention is not good. So you really have to focus, if you have the same problem as me, focus on the structure of the home, meaning the floors, the walls, the facade of the home. Imagine you're starting from a blank slate. It takes a lot of imagination, but that's what you should be looking for when you visit a place. So number one, what is the most important thing, according to most people, is location. So they say that uh, you want to purchase the smallest home in the nicest neighborhood you can afford. Why? Because location is everything. I don't agree 100% with that, but that's what most people say, so that might apply to you too. You want to be attentive to the noises that are around the house. So maybe go check out the house in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night to make sure you have a 360 view of the noises you're going to be having. Not only during the nighttime, but the noise during the daytime impacts your well-being too. Uh, stress caused by noise is a real thing. For location, then you want to uh, pay attention to the distance to your main activities. What are your main activities? Is it your job? So if it's your job, you want to keep in mind that you want to have a commute that is under 30 minutes. It's proven that if you have a commute one way that is longer than 30 minutes, it's going to impact you in the long term. Um, when you get really excited about a house, um, you are and you have like an hour commute, you're like, oh, it's going to be fine. I'm going to figure it out. But after six months, you think it's maybe not the best decision you made. What do you need around your home? Do you need a good grocery store? Is a gym important to you? Do you need a school for your kids or a church to repent from your sins? The neighborhood is very important too. What kind of people do you want to be surrounded by? Couples, singles, are you looking for a community to build and the new space you're gonna live or is that not important for you because you already have your own people that live elsewhere? And an important factor that can help you to decide is talk to 
the neighbors when you visit a home because the realtor is going to give you a certain amount of information um, and he only has a certain amount of information because he doesn't live there so go talk to the neighbors and without going into gossiping stick to the facts of the pros and cons of living in that area that could apply to you they know much more than anyone else could uh, write on a website or anyone can tell you about during a visit number two renovation so if you're thinking of purchasing a home and completely renovating it because you think the price of the house is going to be below your budget but then you need to consider the price of renovation you want to make sure you are uh, going to have an roi so what is the price of renovation in that area to give you an idea for example in new york city renovation starts and that is the starting price at 150 dollars per square feet now when you go outside of the uh, city the contractors the construction work is less expensive unless you go to fancy areas like fairfield county uh, cities like uh, greenwich and connecticut or the hamptons that's going to be pricey too um, also if you want to build you want to be careful of zoning meaning what can be built and what can't be built um, before getting in this field I thought you can do whatever you want land of the free just purchase the land build a teepee build a nightclub in the middle of nowhere no there's rules there's certain square footages you can add to your house and you can't obviously everyone knows that um, number three and this is three in France in America it's three three criterias what are your criterias before you visit a house is it the kitchen uh, that is very important because you use it a lot or do you use do you mostly eat out and would rather have a smaller kitchen but a larger garage because you own a lot of cars some basics other basics you need to determine before visiting houses is for example the numbers the number of rooms how many are you do you need an office space? Do you need a guest house? Is it just going to be two of you? Because if it's just going to be two of you, it doesn't make sense to purchase a six bedroom home. Do you like modern or traditional design? The facade of the house, is that important to you? So moving from Europe, when I um, started looking at houses in the US, um, it was a little bit of a culture shock because the way the houses are built are very different. Uh, the styles of the houses in the U.S. and m m in most part of the U most parts of the U.S. but around New York, it's wooden slates on houses, and that didn't look really um, aesthetic to me. In in Europe, of course, I'm comparing the incomparable, but we have cement facades, facades with bricks um, that look more sturdy. So I had to adjust to that. And when I'm looking at houses, the facade is very important to me but maybe the inside is more important for you. Number four, the layout. Do you want a bathroom right next to your bedroom? Is it essential for you to have the bath on the same floor as your bedroom? Or on the contrary, would you rather have the bathroom away from your bedroom? Are the bedrooms next to each other? So I see a lot of houses where they say four bedrooms and then you have bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three, bedroom four. I don't see how that is appealing like you don't want to stack the bedrooms one next to each other um, for multiple reasons uh, the main one being noise like you don't want to hear what's going on in the next room whether it's your kids or your guests I was gonna make a joke sometimes I think I'm a stand-up comedian but that's um, that's it wasn't a funny joke I have good taste in decor but not in jokes so some rooms have fixed purposes, obviously like the kitchen and the bathroom when you tour a house. But keep in mind that whatever the realtor is telling you or what, however the house is staged is not how you have to keep it. Um, so if they show you the bedroom, the, um, the bedroom and the living room, these are interchangeable. You can do whatever you want with it. It's pretty flexible. Number five, my favorite point, of course, the aesthetics. I have a lot of people from Paris joining right now. Hi, Chaim. Um, so windows, their placement is very important. And what amount of lights are you looking for? So for that uh, point, it's very important 
uh, to determine what kind of lighting you want throughout the day. So I have a video that I did last November where I'm wearing on my IGTV where I'm wearing a black hat, if it's easier to visualize. I talk about the north, south, east, and west exposure of the home, uh, the circadian rhythm according to whether you want light in the morning, in the afternoon, whether you're a morning person or a night owl. So that's very important. And do you like the view from your windows? A lot of people just look at the house inside, but what do you see outside of your window? Um, the houses sometimes are built very close to each other and your window gives on another, on the neighbor's window. I don't want to know what's happening in my neighbor's house. And he doesn't want to know what's happening in mine. Definitely not. So for example, the view on trees, on bushes, on nature is, brings so much more to to a house it's often also where um when we're visiting a place we're excited we're nervous we don't want to take too much time from the realtor the realtor is talking to us we're probably visiting with a, another person so we don't think of all these things we just look at superficial uh things because we're not 100 percent focused so if you look at all these elements keep them in mind before you visit the house it's definitely going to help you um details like moldings a fireplace a fireplace you know how much i love fireplaces i talk about it all the time um a mold so moldings are going to make your space go from very basic to um travailler uh, travailler is um where effort was put in the details of the house moldings in a house is not expensive to put in but it adds so much and storage so for example i don't need a lot of storage but most people are looking for a lot of storage uh, so does the home you're visiting have enough storage and how are the doors on the storage we're going in depth right now but it is important so for example do you want solid wooden doors for the storage that is going to close easily you want to look out for those little um flexible doors that fold outside and that have a little metal rim on the butt butt and the bottom these break after six to eight months you're gonna have to replace it so look out for those and finishes i'm telling you this because people who are not in interior design they walk into a room and they like the room or they don't like it but they don't know why they like it or they don't like it so look at for example the tiles in a bathroom or a kitchen maybe you don't like the color of the backsplash in the kitchen and that's fixable really easily um, I wouldn't recommend you do it yourself, but it doesn't cost a lot and it's um, a different backsplash color can change an entire kitchen. Or another detail, the floors, um, Americans tend to think that hardware floors are way more um, elegant, that they make the space look way better. So do you not like the space because there's um, cement on the floor because the carpet was just ripped out? Look at these details that um that you can tweak and the last point that people don't think about too much is the cleanliness of the house or the apartments so i'm not talking about messy because if it's messy or cluttered that's it's okay the previous owner is going to leave with their stuff it's obviously not going to stay there but cleanliness i have personally never visited um an apartment or a house that was dirty but if you're visiting a house or an apartment that is not clean, think about the years of dirt that accumulated behind those floors and those walls. And that attracts mm, not so pleasant living beings behind the walls. You get where I'm going. So look out for that. Don't think I'm just going to clean it and it's going to look all nice. That's an accumulation of years. Um, so that's it for this video. What to look out for when you're house hunting. One, the location. Two, do you want to renovate or do you want to purchase a house that's already completely done to your taste or not? Three, your criteria, your main criteria is how many rooms, etc. For the layout of the rooms and the flow of the light in the house. And the last point, the aesthetic details that are going to make all the difference. Also, if you have any uh, interior design topics that you want to know more about and that I haven't already discussed in a video, feel free to DM me. Have a nice weekend.